Today we are at Rose Hill Cemetery, which is on the far north side of Chicago. Another older cemetery. We're in. This is the grave of Reinhard Schwimmer. He uh, was an associate of the Dion O'Banion, the Northside Gang, uh, in the battle against Al Capone. Uh, 1900 to 1929, 1929, uh, he was one of the victims of the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. I believe that was on Clark Street. And he was kind of a guy who, uh, What's interesting is uh, there's a flower here, uh, so someone's, someone's coming here. Um, what's interesting about him is that he wasn't really a hoodlum. Uh, well, he kind of developed into, he was getting into the gang. Uh, he was connected with Gusenberg, the Gusenberg brothers. I think it was Peter he was doing some optometry work for and uh, he was getting more and more involved and he was going around bragging about it to his friends and he was even quoted as saying that uh, he, uh, he could have, he feared no one, he could have anyone killed that he wanted, blah, blah, blah. So he was uh, one of the surprise victims when the police came, the real police, and found the carnage uh, in that carted shop so, uh, Dr. Reinhard Schwimmer, he divorced his wife, Faye, in 1923. I see a Josephine, 1868, who doesn't show uh, death date. Anyway, he was, uh, he was also uh, friends with Jaime Weiss. And uh, when he divorced Faye, he moved into the, uh, one of the hotels where the gang was hung out. So he was... He was running contraband uh, for the gang, and he was getting deeper and deeper. But he was at the wrong place at the wrong time. You wonder if this is just, I think this is probably just a marker, and uh, not a sarcophagus. Ah, Mother. Oh, Ella Wing Parker. 1833 to 1892. This is John Cochran. He uh, died July 1893. I think it was July 29th. You can see what the limestone does under severe winter conditions. Basically melts like a salt block. This is the marker for A.B. Dick. Uh, he was pretty notable in Chicago. He actually started out in the 1800s, uh, I believe, uh, as a lumber company here. And then he, Albert Blake Dick, April 1856, August 1934. He uh, had, he was selling some inventions or representing uh, Thomas Edison, and then he started getting into uh, office supplies. And uh, after that, he started getting into copiers, mimeographs. He's the guy who coined the term mimeograph uh, back in the, uh, I guess this would be the 50s and 60s, because I remember that when I was in grade school. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, quite a notable company. Another interesting tomb, last name Fellows. J.H. Fellows was born in May. Was born May fifth, eighteen 
1822, and uh, he died May 26, 1891. That's J.H., this is C.A. Fellows, and here, again, a lot of coins, interesting, uh, I've seen this before. Uh, oh, I can't get too close. There's some type of hornet's nest here. Anyway, 16-year-old uh, Lulu Fellows. Many hopes lie buried here. That's quite a profound statement. And she is in a glass case. And it looks like this was, of course, done many years later. The limestone starting to melt in these uh, climates. And someone was good enough to donate, and they put this, what looks like a plexiglass case, on here. She's reading a book. I'm really taking a chance here with these. Well, they're not attacking. Maybe we'll flip that upside down. I don't know if we can read that. Lulu Fellows, may she rest in peace. This is the grave of Ignaz Schwinn, famous for the Schwinn bicycles, America's favorite bike. Company founded in 1895, uh, a, a butcher backed him with money, he emigrated from Germany with not a lot of money, so he got backed, and uh, he was an innovative uh, industrial type designer in uh, 1860 to 1948. Let me tell you something, the Schwinn bicycle. Now I grew up in the 60s with my Stingray, Stingrays, because they always got stolen. And of course the 10 speed, uh, oh my gosh, we lived on the Schwinn. Uh, looks like Helen, his wife, 1863, three years uh, uh, younger. She died in 1932, so she died before him. And all the, uh, these are all Schwinn's. Great bike, Mr. Schwinn. Rest in peace. So the mausoleum. And uh, this is where um, one of the crypts I wanted to find of Jack Brickhouse, who was a famous announcer for the Chicago Cubs. Boy, look at these doors. Uh huh. South door. Got it. The Rose Hill Mausoleum. Ursula Levy with her family. Looking for Jack Brickhouse. She said up here to the right, up the stairs, and look for a baseball. I would think it would be here. No, I don't see, I don't see Jack Brickhouse. Oh, Jack Brickhouse, here he is. Oh man. One of my favorite people. What a great guy he was. He was an announcer for the Chicago Cubs. Very distinctive. Here's somebody's left a note. Jack, Chicago Cubs 2016 World Series champs. Wish you could have seen it. It was amazing. 
Hey, let me tell you, brother, he did see it. And he was shouting his very famous two words, hey, hey. I remember watching the 60s Ernie Banks, Glenn Burkert, Don Kessinger, Cubs, and uh, he was cheering them all the way. Jack Brickhouse, wow, what a, what a legend in Chicago. Great guy, too. Warm spirit. Well hit, deep to right, back, and, 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 it's over! Willie Smith just homered, the Cubs win the game! Nancy Ann Hankey. 1969 to 2017. There's a bright face. Matthew John Haller, 73 to 2019. So he died, uh, died very recently. Francisca Ramirez Soriano. Some beautiful architecture and interiors. The stained glass. Private Lloyd S. Spinner, in the service of his country. He died in 1944, obviously, World War II. Died, uh, was killed in action, no doubt. This place goes on forever. There are thousands here. Leo M. Hirsch Tritt and Bess. You know, the stones, uh, I see this, this I think is a Jewish tradition. I remember watching the movie Schindler's List, they put all the stones on his tomb. How long? How long have these stones been here? There's no way to tell. You know, every piece, every part of the ceiling, the walls, the floor, everything's marble. I mean, can you imagine the work, the, the money this must have cost? Thomas Michael Alberts. 1958, a year before I was born. He died in 2012. Feliz or uh, Villanueva was a doctor. 1941 to 2019. Happy birthday, happy Father's Day. It's nice. His kids are. His kids are coming. He's not forgotten. Michael Whitehead, 1964, he was uh, born five years after me, and he died back in 2014. Uh, this is great. This is a picture of him with his kids, and uh, I'm sure this is his uh, kids now. Rest in peace, Michael. Interesting marker here. I don't, not sure what this is or stands for. Larry Bruce and Michael John. Yeah, I'm not sure what this is. So uh, I can interpret it as something torn or separated with maybe a bond. I'm not sure what, uh, if anyone knows uh, maybe this is a, a certain ethnicity symbol. It's very interesting. I can't tell. It, 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 I, I don't know what that is. It's not a branch. Maybe it's a wrapping, something wrapped. But anyway, I, I believe this, I'm going to guess that this is 
two people that were very close and separated in death, but still, still bonded by this connection. If anyone knows, let me uh, put in comments. I don't know, are these greyhounds? Looks like uh, maybe racing dogs. So this is interesting. There are a lot of small, very small tombstones all together. Too close to be, I would think, buried side by side. They have to be uh, children. Um, died 18, August 5th, 1853. Wow, this goes way, way back. Um, 1934. So under 20 years old, I think that's that was the year born. I don't see, it's really hard to read because it's the limestone again. This says husband. This, Florence. Maybe that's, maybe that's the last name. Maybe that doesn't say husband. H-U-S-B-A-N-D. Yeah, that's husband. Let's try and read. This is husband. This something A-K-U-L. I can't read. What does that say? I don't know. be a mystery. A couple of graves forgotten. No way to know who that is. This looks like a sad story here. Bross family. William, born in New Jersey, November 4th, 1813, died January 27th, 1890 as wife Mary Jane Bross. She died in 1903. This goes way, way back, but it shows you, you know, living in the, in the early to mid 1800s, the mortality rate of your children. There's, looks like this has been put up recently. Children who died in infancy, seven kids over the span of 16 years from 1940, I'm sorry, 1840 to 1856. Baby Bross, Clara, John, Emma, Mary, Willie, Natty. That's a sad story. Charles J. Hull, born March 18, 1820, died February 12, 1889. Charles was uh, famous in Chicago. He was a real estate developer. And actually, Jane Addams, uh, I think upon his death, um, leased his house and that became the famous Hull House, so that's why, uh, that's how the Hull House got its name here in Chicago. Thomas Edwin Greenfield Ransom, uh, 1831, died 18, October 29, 1861. And he is, uh, has this whole plot here. 65 Illinois Infantry. This grave just says soldier.
soldier. Hmm. 1864, 1864. These are all 1863, 1864. Civil War. Horatio P. Fulton. November 2nd, 1862. Beautiful little fawn there. It's amazing the uh, wildlife. And uh, this must have a deer herd because this is completely high walls, every inch, all the way around. Well, it's time to head out. Old Cemetery. We'll be leaving here, Rose Hill. Established in 1859. We'll, uh, we'll call it a day. I gotta get going. You know, these gates here are so, you can barely make it through. You know, this was for all, this was for horse and carriage. Just imagine, 1850s. All right, have a great day, everybody.